Guys, comic book fans, let me just tell you, for the first time in weeks, there is not an amazing Spider-Man comic book to talk about. However, we got some other great comics to talk about. Fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. I'm your host, Mike Spider Slayer, and welcome back to another episode of After the Pull. This is the video series where I talk about some of my most highly anticipated comics of the week to see if they live up to the hype. And I do a countdown, and then I highlight the top five now do these top five hold out through the entire week well you gotta wait and find out until tuesday night where i do my live stream with two of my best friends cat comic uno and brant fowler where we talk about our top five comics of the week and we talk about our most highly anticipated comics for next week we talk about comic book news have great discussion and answer all of your questions live so hopefully you guys can be there every tuesday night 10 15 p.m eastern time so without further ado guys let's get started with this week's episode of after the poll so the first book that we're going to be talking about this week is Avengers Forever Issue 4. Now this was number 8 pretty much by default because I thought, hey, why don't I jump into this at Issue 4 and see what this bad boy is about and if I can understand. Yeah, no, I... Pfft. I was completely lost and I felt like this was the last issue to this first story arc and this was quite an interesting tale. Um, inside the book though, the book looks pretty cool. There's some great artwork in there. Like look at the facial expressions in there. It looks like we have um, Thor's granddaughters in this book and they're led by all these, you know, a couple different Mjolnirs, I guess, from different universes to come help save the day uh, while this Black Skull battle was going on. Dude, when I was reading this book, I was completely lost. So I'm going to have to read issues one, two, and three, and then reread issue four to see if I can understand what happened in this first story arc. But this is definitely a story that takes place in different universes and it has different versions of your favorite characters. Like, for instance, there's a Lady Moon Knight in here and you also have Thor's granddaughters in here. You have... Um, uh, old man Logan as I guess he was the uh, in, I guess in charge of the Infinity Stones or he was the Phoenix or something like that and uh, there's this Vision who is like real skinny so there's like all these different versions of the characters that you know and love in the Marvel Universe but they're trying to save different Earths and that's what these daughters of Thor or granddaughters of Thor were doing so uh I don't know what to expect out of this, but I'm just going to have to go back and read the previous issues. So with this week's episode of After the Poll, there's quite a few series ending and there's quite a few series that are actually beginning and this one is ending and this one goes to Batman Detective Comics issue 1058. That's right, guys. The conclusion to this Arkham Tower story. Now, not much really happened. There wasn't really a huge climactic conclusion. This was kind of just a wrap up of, you know, what happened to Dr. Ware, how he was an actual con man, how he was trying to steal money from the city and, and things like that. Also, our heroes were searching uh, for Psycho Pirate and same with uh, Penguin. They were searching for him as well. And uh, there wasn't really much that actually happened in this book. The book's artwork always looks good um but there was just very little that happened in here right and so at the end of the day you get to see a funeral you wind up seeing the new doctor that's going to take over arkham tower a legit doctor not a con man because obviously the guy that took over the tower before was just this big con guy working with psycho pirate to try to steal money from the city and that's what you get here and then really you wind up getting to see the mayor's wife d dealing with some therapy and right as that page is happening guess who you hear over the radio waves where you wind up hearing the Riddler. So right away, it's like, well, we're going to dive into the next major thing. We can't even conclude without the next thing happening, right? Uh, it was an okay conclusion. Like I said, it wasn't very climatic. I felt like the climatic issue was like the last issue and maybe the issues previous to that. So 
Take it for what it is. Overall, I enjoyed the story. Like I said, I was just ready for it to be over. Uh, I thought it went on just a little bit too long. Coming in at number six, it's Morphin Time. That's right, guys. It's Godzilla versus Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. This is issue one. I had to pick this up because I was hoping that Godzilla would kick some serious butt in this book, and he actually did. He is the true king of monsters, and uh, you get to witness that here in this book, but this book was very predictable. It, it's just like watching a Power Rangers episode where you wind up getting Rita, who has a monster, and she enlarges the monster, and the monster fights the Power Rangers, and the Power Rangers, you know, succeed at the end of the day. Here, it was no different the only thing that you wound up seeing that was different was they go to a different universe a different earth but in the same city ruled by godzilla and there's this dude that's also trying to take over earth at the same time so rita and this person team up or whatnot and we wind up seeing tommy get transported at the same time uh and he tries to battle against godzilla and he loses but just as everything is dire here comes the Power Rangers. They find a way through Zordon to uh, make their way to this alternate Earth. The actual artwork in this book, though, was phenomenal. Uh, so while reading it, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, this is just like a freaking episode of Power Rangers. It was entertaining to look at, though. Uh, but yeah, every time I was reading this, I was like, I thought of the TV show. But overall, even though it was very predictable, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. I'm going to continue reading issue two because I feel like there's a little bit more story here to tell than just them fighting Godzilla. There has to be something a little bit more in depth. Colin Bunn is the writer here. I'm usually used to him writing horror books so maybe this goes a little bit darker i don't know we'll see what happens but i will pick up issue two so now we're entering the top five that's right guys my top five favorite comics of the week as of this point and the first book we're going to be talking about at number five is robin issue 12 this series continues to be a phenomenal series it's continuing and we're still dealing a little bit with the Lazarus Island, but finally, Damien gets off of it, right? So this book's artwork is always phenomenal. Love the facial expressions of the characters. The colors are very bright, vibrant. They're energetic action scenes, right? Check out Talia here. Look at Roz in here as well. Like, I love the way all these characters look. And what was cool about this issue is we got to see Damien fight against himself because he was still dealing with like after effects of the Lazarus goo that surrounded him and he was kind of going insane he was hallucinating and whatnot and he was thinking about resurrecting Alfred but that did not happen in this issue because he realizes like what are the side effects what would happen to Alfred if he was to resurrect him and instead he gains another ally by his mother right and his mother wants to recruit him to try to change the cycle right to try to maybe do some actual good so you're like oh wow that's kind of a you know mother-son issues very uh heartwarming you know but not everything was all good and dandy by the time you got to the end of this issue because the one that stole his heart legitimately flatline it looks like at the end of the day, she was just using him uh, and uh, she literally stole the heart for her mentor and it looks like they're going to create another Damien? I don't know. Like she stole the heart to give to him and I forgot the dude's name, uh, but I was like all oh, blown away by that situation. I was like, oh, what a bitch, right? You know, so hopefully we'll see more of that in the future and how that turns out. And then we get a little bit of an epilogue in this book and then we wind up finding out that what killed Ra, uh, what killed um, Raz's grandmother is basically affecting Raz as well like he's on his way out like he's dying and he can't get resurrected by the Lazarus pits anymore so really interesting story to be told here I can't wait for more of this I think Joshua Williamson is doing a phenomenal job here when it comes to this series and my whole question about this book was where are we going to go after this tournament well he just planted the seed for the things to come and I guess now we're getting that Shadow War story and I don't know if this continues into all that other stuff but this was a good book man I'm really looking forward to reading more 
Coming in at number four, this goes to Saga chapter 57. This book is really good. The book does such an awesome job at its character work and its narration. That's what makes Saga so good. And again, Fiona Staples' artwork is... This is the series where I feel she shines. Like, all the characters always look so great in this book, and I love looking at her artwork, whereas in other comics, it just doesn't seem as finished or as polished or whatnot. But this book was really good. You get to learn a little bit more of the supporting character about this guy, like what happened to him, like why he lost his arm and whatnot, and you get to see... Um, Lana taking on this job that was offered by this space pirate and you got to see how she removed her ring her wings she is this race where it's the horns and the wings they face each other in this war and how this book all started out was these two enemies of species of each other wound up falling in love with each other and they created a child that's a mix and that's a big no-no right so they're always ap after you know her because she again is this winged character and she had to surgically get her wings removed in this issue and you find out how she got that done overall if you don't know what i'm talking about because you never read this story before this is a great book and i will always recommend it but the thing that i recommend is you can't dive into it now go back read trades or get the omnibus and fall in love with this this world because it is phenomenal number three goes to that's right guys venom lethal protector issue one david michelini is back writing the character once again and i was really highly anticipating this book and this book just brings me back to old school venom and i loved it this is before he's king in black this is before whatever he is now the artwork is masterful right this is everything that you loved about the character it's just awesome uh, this is back in the days where he first became lethal protector where he wants to do good um but people look at him as always that villain right and it doesn't matter if he's got to stop good guys or bad guys so it makes him the anti-hero in this in this book um we come across characters like i think his name is blood slayer and some d-lister villains we get the return of humbug in this book which i was like dude this guy has only come across like a handful of issues and he shows up in this book which i thought was so hysterical here he is right here. This dude is such a loser. He has like the power of like sounds and it does make a formidable, formidable foe against Venom because Venom is very sound sensitive and he winds up defeating the symbiote in this book. And uh, it's just awesome, man. It, when you see these team-ups between these villains and how they don't respect each other. But the, the good thing about this book we gave this book a little bit more meat is we wind up getting to see Dylan still getting used to bonding with the symbiote. The symbiote is not as talkative as it is today. It doesn't have a face by his side. It just kind of reacts to the, what he says and, you know, by a little bits of movements and things like that. And we can see that Eddie is still so bitter towards Peter on how he ruined his life. And it's not always about Eddie Brock and the symbiote as a we. It is still about Eddie in many, many ways. We also get introduced to Annie in this book, his fiance or his former fiance. And uh, it's really awesome, man. This is this was a, a fun read. Just brings back to a much more simpler time when it comes to the villain. So if you were on the fence about picking this up, I say pick this up because this is a Venom that you could read if you're not digging the new stuff. Coming in at number two. Guys, this book always continues to deliver. And this is the conclusion to this story arc. This is Gunslinger Spawn issue six. Brett Booth does it again, guys. Artwork is always phenomenal in this book. Uh, looks great. I mean, just check out Violator in this book. Such a well drawn book the details are amazing you could read this book and then when you get done reading it you just look at the artwork enjoy all the detail and effort that goes into this book it is so 
awesome, man. I just, I don't have another word to explain at the top of my head, but it's such a great book to look at. Now, what this story was, is this shows you how cunning Gunslinger Spawn is. He's not the most, I guess, uh, strongest Spawn there is, right? But he is very smart and he kind of just gets by to win. And he teams up with the clown in this issue because the clown wants to his help to open up the dead zones so clown can rule the the throne right and the promise here was that gunslinger would be able to go back to his time zone right so to solidify their relationship what happens is Clown brings Gunslinger to his secret island and they are going to break bread with each other, have this feast or drink with each other. And Gunslinger is trying to get obviously all types of information. They drink and drink and drink and it was just awesome. Gunslinger even puts down his, you know, his mask and shows his face and really opens up to him. There's some really good comedic moments in this book. And uh, by the time we get towards the end of this book, Gunslinger gets Clown so freaking drunk that he gets the advantage to try to beat his ass up. And we get to see him win. And I thought that was a very cunning way in order to get the upper hand. This was such a great book, guys. So entertaining. I definitely say read this if you have not. I don't even think you have to be a fan of spawn to enjoy this book or understand what's going on just read this from issue one and you'll love it i guarantee it okay guys now it's that time where we reach a number one and will this title hold up well you'll have to find out tuesday night what my final definitive top five is but before i reveal this number one i still have these few books to read that can overtake this other top five i still have wolverine patch issue one i still have maestro issue two we have demons issue one the book from scott snyder and greg capullo wonder girl issue one and then i have bolero issue three so like i said find out tuesday night all right so the book that got number one as of right now was Rogues issue one. Let me tell you, DC, you gotta keep writing different stories besides Batman stories because when I read this book, this was so fresh and so refreshing not to read a book that had Batman in it. I loved this book. The only downfall to it is because it's a magazine. I just, it's so big and you don't want to bend the spine when you're reading it because it's like a trade paperback. But, you know, you get your money's worth out of this book. This book was really well done as you get to see these rogues come together for the first time in over 10 years to try to do this mission. And the characters that were in here were uh, Captain Gold, Golden Glider, Trickster, Bronze Tiger, Magneta, Heat Wave, Mirror Master, and... We don't really see him yet towards the end, but Gorilla Grodd, and he's going to be the enemy in this book. And what made this book so good was you get to see our villains 10 years into the future, and we wind up seeing that they're trying to turn over a new leaf, right? They they, they live the 9 to 5 job, um, they're trying to do good in the community, and it just doesn't work out. And the person that snaps is Leonard himself because he just gets a promotion at his job and he overhears his boss talking bad about him, how he is such a loser, he stinks like stale beer and all this other type of stuff. And it sets something off. So Leonard overhears this job at the beginning of the comic book about Gorilla Grodd, how he's sitting on a ton of gold that's untraceable. And so what he does is when he has his little conniption fit, right, he sits there and says, you know what, I'm going to get the band back together. So you wind up getting to see the recruitment process on 
what all these characters have been up to in the past 10 years and how he tries to recruit them all. The biggest thing about this book is when they try to get Mirror Master at the end, uh, things get pretty dark there and I loved every minute of this book. It was so well done. Let me just show you a little bit of the artwork in here. This is the beginning of the book where Mirror, or I'm sorry, where Captain Cold is on parole. Here's a part where he's doing his nine to five job. I mean, it's so well done. It's so well drawn. And uh, I really loved every single bit and minute of this book. And in all honestly, this story was so well told. I don't see anything overtaking this number one book. This was awesome and much better than I ever expected. So this is definitely a recommend for you guys to pick up this week. So there you guys have it. There are my rankings so far at this point. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I want to know what your favorite books were at this point so far. It definitely was a slower week this week, but uh, there was some good reads. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. And of course, guys, if you love the content and you missed out on my comic book day haul, go ahead, click on it right here. You definitely find some great stuff in that haul and of course guys keep buying keep collecting but most importantly keep reading those comics guys thank you so much i'll see you real soon bye